Hi, this is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto, and welcome to my VVVV beta tutorial. Um, today, I'm gonna talk about bullet, bullet physics. But before that, uh, there's one thing that I was missing from my previous tutorial, so I want to uh, uh, share that one first, and then I'll get into my tutorial for today. Uh, so for those who followed my last tutorial, I was talking about how to use OBS to capture VVVV. However, I forgot to mention one important uh, thing, which is I would highly recommend using um, display capture rather than uh, game capture. So there's a few different modes. And uh, what display capture does is it captures your entire screen. So if you have two screen, like you have, if you have your second screen, you can choose like a sec your second screen or first screen as a, as a display to capture. But with uh, what uh, this game capture thing does is it capture your captures your render window. Like spec you can specify which window you want to capture. So if you press game capture and press OK, you can actually choose like capture specific window. And then this window thing pops up, then you can choose VVVV. However, I'm not going to click this because a uh, good thing about VVVV is that you can change the render scale like this one. At the moment, it's uh, 400 by 3000, uh, 300, but if you scale it up, it changes. And this fucks up when you uh, try to use uh, game capture in uh, OBS because it thinks that it's the resolution is static but VVV is not. So whenever you change the size of your window or whenever you move it, 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 it just disappears. And also if you have a few different previews, then it starts like messing it up. Like which one are you mentioned and which one do you mean and things like that. But if you use the window capture, a display capture, um, that kind of thing doesn't happen. It's just, you know, it's, it's capturing your entire window. So by this, uh, so if you have two different monitors, you can use one for patching and you can just full screen on the second one and start capturing. And if you only have one screen, uh, that's the reason why I mentioned using shortcut in OBS because even though you have uh, your render window full screen on your main monitor, you can still use a uh, shortcut function in OBS to, to let it start capturing. So yeah, that was what I forgot to mention last time. And Yep, so I'm going to delete this one, and then I'm going to start today's tutorial. Okay, so today's tutorial about, is about bullet physics. And uh, I've been, uh, recently I've been playing quite a lot with this. I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out um, how I can share my knowledge. And I had this really nice tutor, uh, workshop at Node 15, I think that was on 2015. And it was really great, uh, a lot learned. I thought it was really powerful, but on the other hand, other hand it's a bit the way you it, it works is a bit different than like how you usually work with VVVV. So I was kind of like, okay, I'm interested, but I don't know when, like, how to work on it. And it's it's like you know, it didn't make me feel like I should start, but I knew that it was super strong, so I decided to start working on it and realize how strong it is. So I decided to share it. So as you see in this video, um, each balls are colliding to each other, so it's hitting and it's bumping. And so it looks like it's existing right there, right? You know, usually without using bullet, uh, every balls will just uh, overlay to each other and it doesn't matter where they are because they don't know uh, where each of them exist. But using by using bullet, uh, it actually knows where your other balls are and they start hitting to each other, like pushing each other, which is which really looks nice and cute. And for those who's familiar with Unity or Unreal Engine, you might know that it's already there. Like for those, like for game engine stuff, it bullet is like a very basic stuff. But in VVV, it's not. But of course, there is a way to 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 get bullets in VVVV. So yeah, that's the point for today. Let's get started. Um. Okay. So. To use bullet in VVV, you have to install, uh, like you have to download the DirectX 11 nodes PAX folder into your PAX folder. So please download the one that you're using. I, I'm using the one from 64 bits. So I download this one and put it in your PAX folder. But I think if you guys have followed my previous tutorial, you already know this workflow so, and you already have DirectX 11 nodes installed. 
so yep and once you have dx11 installed in your uh, vvvv if you type bullet you should see all different uh bullet related node showing so or and box bvh bvh not so there's a ton of them thanks for vux to making these um yep and also uh if you right click on this uh, search window it also has this really nice cat browse by category function which then you can say okay i'm looking for something related to bullet then you, if you just open it up it shows all the related nodes this is very handy i didn't know this until today so if you want to look for color then you don't have to type color you just have to keep this open that's that was just an addition uh, so yeah okay oh shit why did the lines uh, so the first thing we'll need for today oh shit is have this image in the background uh, so that I don't forget so first thing we'll need is rigid world world so this is the very first node that will you need uh, while using bullet and what it does it creates the world so in default VVV's world doesn't have gravity it doesn't have it does have time step uh, but it doesn't have this like physics things but if you enable this um, you can start playing with bullet already so in default gravity is set in default so i just keep it like that um rearrange this and then this one is reset but i don't have to reset yet uh so enable is on iteration is about like sort of like resolution like preciseness of collider i'll just set it to default time step is uh how do you say uh it's the time step of your simulation so this one i'll set it to so this one is the divide node val divide value and then i usually work in 60 frame so i'll divide one with 60 and then this will be my time step and okay so now we can start uh working on it already uh so what should i do first um Okay, so now I have the world set. Now, and then what I'll do is I'll start creating uh, bodies. I'll use create dynamic body. And what it is, so at the moment the world is set, but there's no object, right? So I need to start uh, creating an object. So I'll create a box and box bullet. This one also has to be bullet. And then this one says initial pose. So I'll set, there's the node called pose join. So I'll set this one here. And this one is the default position. So I'll just set it to two, Y axis two. And then, uh, yeah, this is basically it. And then this one says world. What you have to do is you have to connect. Uh, so this, you know, as you know, VV doesn't connect things remotely. So you have to make sure that this dynamic body is connected to the world. So you connect these two. And then, oh no. Uh, yeah, this is okay. So once I press this, um, yeah, it should start creating. Uh, uh, let's see how that works. Uh, so now I'll have this node called debug draw. What it does is it, it shows the output from what's already generated in the world so rigid i'll connect this one to rigid world uh, i'll connect rigid world to debug draw and then i'll connect re, uh, debug draw to the render and then enable debug draw mode and i also have an axis and grid just to make sure i know where the ground is Group node. okay so now I should have everything set. Uh, oh, I forgot to set the camera. My 
this one I'll use I usually use this one uh, transform orbit camera so I just open this one up and then connect it here and then I'll make a latitude a bit higher and then distance to four hey you saw it there was a ball falling down where did it come from yeah there you go see so I now have a I have one ball falling down but it's going all the way down because I don't have a floor so now I need to create a static body so I'll create static body and then I'll just use the bullet rigid and then I'll connect, I'll connect the plane to here and this one is also plain bullet so every single thing that's connected to bullet has to be something uh, related to bullet so you can't just connect like normal grid or normal box and then again I'll make this inside the rigid world so I con I'll connect this one and this one and then let's see how it goes okay did you see it so now I'll set this height to 3 so now I have a box and then it's hitting the floor so the floor floor is at the ground uh, no this one is normal so I don't need this one it's at the ground level so as you see the box just hit the floor and did you see it it was bouncing like boom 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 so this is this is what happens with your use bullet. Right now I only have one box, and the reason is because this one says it's do create, but I'm resetting this reset resets the entire rigid world thing. And with dynamic body, you don't have to reset everything. You can actually make one single bang here, and what it does is as much as you press, you can let it like generate new box. So now I have I can keep generating a bunch of boxes. Just be careful if you create it, uh, if you make too many boxes, it crashes. So make sure you reset it. Yeah, this is what happens. So what if I change this one to sphere bullet? So there's sphere bullet. So if I choose this one, it's already connected. And I'll reset everything and then now it's a sphere, it's not a box. You see it? This is nice. So if I uh, yeah, so now I have different <laughs> spheres on top of spheres. I don't know why it's uh, on top of each other, but I think we can start seeing if spheres are actually uh, colliding because now it only looks like it's it's on top of each other. Uh, spheres should like roll. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll make a random uh, spread of a position, uh, no, random, and then I'll set this random spread, and I'll just set this one to three times ten. I want ten spheres, so that should be thirty, and then I'll connect this one to this position, and I'll reset everything, and turn it on. You see now I have uh, thirty different spheres emitting from this random position that I set so every time I click this it emits from the position but if there's a sphere on the, at that position it's colliding to each other and it's hitting which looks really really nice already um, so yeah this is the basic now I'll start creating something different so I, I made a create a static body and I made a plane but I make I want to make another one uh, so I'll just copy paste this one and then I'll put a sphere here sphere bullet and then I'll make this one a bit bigger and let's see what happens oh, and then I want to add some position to it uh, lower and then I'll add y-axis here, so I'll just do plus and then 30 and then one. Uh, now that plus three, so it should start. Uh, it should 
the, the starting position of each ball should be like three something above see now I have one static sphere in the middle and there's a, there's a plane also, also like on the floor so when I let the balls emit it starts from three position but then you start falling because there's gravity and then it hits the static ball and starts rolling so if you for example uh, set uh, pose for this static body and then for example let's say I, I want to create linear spread and then I have three spheres and then vector 3d join so in x-axis I'll make three different sphere no, this is too big, so I'll make this one smaller and then I'll lin set linear spread to 2, no, 5, and now 8. Okay, so these are the static bodies. Let's see what happens if I create the dynamic body. So now they're, they're hitting, they're colliding to three different balls. So they're colliding to each static body and also they're also colliding to each of them like dynamic bodies as well. So it looks really, really real, realistic. And uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And also there's, uh, let's see what happens if I put this gravity off. And then reset everything and do create. So now the gravity is off, so it looks like you're in the space, right? Uh, I'll just make this one bigger. So now it looks like you're in the space, the balls doesn't calm down, it goes to wherever velocity it is. I think the position where they started are too close, so they started hitting each other and they, they just keep going to the direction. Which looks really nice. So if I put this gravity like minus 8, which is quite high, then as you just saw, it starts going down. Then if I set it to zero, it again loses the gravity. So yeah, this is the basic uh, setup to start playing with Bullet. I hope this explained how to work on it. And with our next tutorial, we're going to learn how to shade these balls. Right now, I'm only showing the debuff draw mode, but you can actually make it shaded and look even more real so but to, for today i'll end up here it's the tutorial i i'm trying not to keep this tutorial longer than uh i don't know 20 minutes so this was all for today with next tutorial we're going to be talking about how to shade this stuff and also how to play a bit with gravity and things like that so yeah thanks for watching see you next time